And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Jay and Rob Toy Show. This is live stream number one. Uh, my name is Rob McCallum, aka Rob McZob, and I am joined once again by my co host, uh, collaborator, co conspirator, uh, Mon Frere Extraordinaire. Uh, and you can see him this time with me so that you know he's here, Mr. Jay Bartlett. How are you doing? Greetings. How are you, my friend? And uh, look, look at this fancy headset I have. I feel like I'm like in Buck Rogers right now. So this is great. This is awesome. And we're getting people already on Facebook saying hi. We've got uh, Kale saying, yo, yo, what's up? We've got Whitney Kupski saying, hey, guys. So uh, it's wow. cool that people are going to be able to interact as we go through one of our regular episodes. We'll call out uh, comments when we see them. And of course, we'll have a special guest later on today. One of our Patreon backers is going to join us for our uh, topic number two, if you will. That's awesome. That's really cool. Now, we always start every episode out uh, with an icebreaker. Now, this is something that Jay doesn't know. We talk about kind of the show outline before we go on. But the icebreaker is always a mystery for, for Jay. And now this one is kind of an ongoing icebreaker because Jay has been plagued by the new Star Wars vintage line, Luke Skywalker. Jay, do you want to give us a backstory and where we're currently at with the Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight saga? So anybody who knows me at all knows I'm completely obsessed with Luke Skywalker, particularly from Return of the Jedi, particularly from the very beginning of the film when he has the Jedi robes and all that stuff. Um, and up until this year, we haven't had a really great version of that figure. And then this year, Hasbro dropped in the vintage collection that exact figure with a really awesome sculpt. It looks like Mark Hamill. And uh, couldn't find it anywhere, which isn't surprising in these times. So I... I uh, ordered it off Amazon. I couldn't believe they had it. And it was the same price it would be at, you know, Toys R Us or whatever. And three figures later, uh, they can't get it right. Either the box is twisted and destroyed. Uh, the eyes are painted wrong. So they're actually off the skull. Um, and then I've had a crease in the third one. So uh, I've had three with pretty bad luck, which sucks, man. This is the figure I have to have. Now, just to test the fates, I thought it would be fun to see what my luck was like by comparison. So I pushed Jay's buttons and showed him my Amazon Prime pre-order. And I wanted to see what happened. And it arrived yesterday night. Now, Jay wanted his Jay asked right away, how is it? What's it look like? Because he hasn't had luck. And here's the rub. If I get a pristine Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight, I'm happy to trade it to Jay. And I'll take one of his garbage ones because I'm going to open it. I'll take his garbage toy collection, whatever he needs to, to you know, feel like a better shelfer. He's a, <laughs> he's all about the shelf life. He's a shelfer. He likes the Zollies on, on display. That's okay with me. So this is the big reveal to what happened to me when I opened the package. Okay. So first off, you can <laughs> see it's a little wavy here. It's not. Oh, my God. It's not that great, but it gets better because I was really looking to see if his eyes were going to go left or right. And this is what happened. As you can tell, no, 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 no. Luke Skywalker has never looked so epic. And I mean, it to, to make matters worse, there you go. <laughs> they sent you a clone. <laughs> they sent me Art Trooper fives. I didn't get Luke Skywalker. But I've asked for a replacement. It should be arriving today. We will find out if I actually get Luke Skywalker. So, so at this point, you need to consider yourself lucky, my friend, that you actually got Listen. Luke Skywalker. Because I got this bootleg Django Fett non-Mandalorian clone throwaway. You really can't make this stuff up, man. Like... Um, <laughs> I, I did a YouTube video about this and actually somebody yeah scott right there um it wasn't scott but it was somebody commented that used to work at amazon and everything you order i guess comes in uh comes down this big conveyor belt and if it's like a dvd set a big heavy encyclopedia or a very precious action figure it all goes into dump bins that get separated throughout the facility 
So I can imagine Luke has been on the bottom of this when all these encyclopedias, who's buying encyclopedias, but you know what I mean? These heavy objects are coming. That's my number one Christmas gift. Right. They're crashing down on these things. And I'm just saying, if you're going to get into the action figure space, if it's damaged, that's fine. But you have to keep us in the loop. Don't show me a pristine picture. And sorry, Rob. Sorry, Rob. I'm on my third, (laughs) I'm on my fourth one. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, well, at least you're getting them. I didn't even get the figure I wanted, let alone the condition I needed. Do you have to send that back? Oh, yeah, by February 1st. I, I And I better yeah. do it. We'll see. Th- they'll be getting it. Don't worry. And I'll just be putting a stamp on that and putting it in the mail. So you got the box that was literally the size of that. And let me ask you, when you pulled out the uh, the bubble wrap, was it hard to get out? Wait, bubble wrap? You didn't get bubble wrap in yours? There's no bubble wrap, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this was thrown in a box with other items that are were fairly heavy as well, clunking around on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you ordered more than one thing. That's that's your fault. You should know better. You should know yeah, better. Yeah, but I order more than one thing all the time. It doesn't mean I get them all at the same time. Well, Amazon is a mystery. According it's Amazon, Amazon because it's amazing online, <laughs> but it's not so amazing delivery to my house. Yes. Yeah. So. I'm so, dude. I'm sorry. That's uh, hey, I, I, don't be sorry for me. Be sorry for you. Well, because this was gonna go to you if it was, you know, that's something that that was gonna was gonna fit for you, you know. But it, well, uh, we'll we'll see. Maybe uh, maybe by the end of this episode, maybe I have an update. Maybe I don't. Maybe we'll see. Oh, maybe oh, we'll see. I I think I know what your action figure spotlight's gonna be at the end of the show. Then okay, okay, fair enough. Let's uh, jump to topic number one, and that's our continued conversation of movie figures. Uh, we started this conversation uh, for our exclusive Patreon episode. Uh, and if you want to go check out the beginning of that talk, sign up for Patreon. You'll get it at the end of the month. Uh, check it out, video and audio. It'll be cool. But where, where I want to go from here is basically talking about uh, horror figures, movie maniacs, music figures, and some oddball choices for figures, and some figures that they haven't made yet for some of the so-called biggest movies. So starting off at the top, Jay, movie maniacs. What do you remember when this stuff came out, man? It was the year 2001, I believe. 2000, 2001. And there had been a time in the 90s when uh, you and I were really heavily into um, uh, music. I mean, we still are, but we were really jamming a lot. And that's kind of where our focus was and partying with our friends. And the collecting figures, we still kind of did it, but it took kind of a backseat to just growing up right and and living those years and then around 2000 2001 i don't know what it was it must have been todd mcfarland but all of a sudden the collecting storm came back and uh i remember you know you could go into the store and get gi joe shirts and transformer shirts all of a sudden and uh all that stuff became really cool again i remember one of my favorite horror movies of all time is the original texas chainsaw and i remember they had a leather face figure I remember we didn't really know kind of what to make of it. Yeah. It was just like, this is damn cool, but I mean, are we supposed to be buying these? This was really, this is what solidified the adult collector in my mind was that time. And it was actually, it was Todd McFarlane. Yeah. It, it was really figures for adults. And when he came out with Todd toys in the mid nineties, the spawn stuff that he started with, was already kind of light years ahead of everything else that was in the marketplace, the Kenner stuff, the toy biz stuff, the amount of detail that was being represented on action figures was next level. And adults really started to take notice and appreciate that kind of stuff. So it was a natural evolution for him to really kind of cater directly to that audience and say, Hey, here are some figures for you because they had done R rated action figures for, for kids before and i think pixel dan even has a great video that focuses on stuff like robocop and terminator and aliens these are rated properties that get like action figures for four plus year olds with action features and stuff but where are the adult figures that are like true to life that are a bit scary that are exactly as we see them on screen well here comes todd mcfarlane and, and his group of folks to do that and of course one of the big uh Groups underneath that was Four Horsemen Toy Design, or who eventually became Four Horsemen Toy Design. So it was really right. cool, um, and you can see their detail and all, and how that you know grew from there. But man, Movie Maniacs really 
I'd never seen anything like that before. We had we'd had Star Wars figures from movies, we'd had Batman figures, and of course Batman movies, but nothing like this. And that's what I mean. How it was kind of confusing. I didn't really know how to take it, and uh, neither did you. It's what are we supposed to do with these? Because it bordered, it was borderline statue. It came with um, most of them came with the movie poster uh, in the background, so it was kind of a stand behind them, and they were almost like cheaper versions of statues. They yeah. were articulated, but it was just kind of confusing. And I remember seeing Jason, and I can't remember what part it's one of the later episodes of friday the 13th that he's from but i'm just like oh my god this is incredible like the detail the paint uh so who was in that first wave leatherface i think it was leatherface freddie jason Jason. um was ash in the first wave or was he in the second wave second he was the hard one to get i remember for was a it, long time. And T1000, I think, was in the second wave as well. Snake Plissken was in that first wave, wasn't he? No. I'm try- a ghost face again. He was second wave. Um, but that first wave was so... It was pretty much all the horror icons. And to my knowledge, um, no one was really doing anything with those properties at that time. At least I wasn't aware of it. So I think Todd really had... Uh, you know, He created a marketplace for this stuff. Um yeah, and he just then we kind of sat there and thought, you know, we talked about Days to Confuse the other day about, wow, what other movies could we, would we want to see action figures for? Would we want a Donnie figure from Days to Confuse? Like, what would he do? What would he come so, with? So I just looked it up to get clarification because I don't want to miss any of those iconic figures. It came out in '98, uh, mm-hmm. so probably which explains why it was 2000 for us in Canada. And the first yeah. wave was was Freddie Leatherface and Jason, just those three, and then the yeah. second series. Uh, was uh, the crow, Edward Scissorhands, oh, Shaft, and Snake Plissken? Shaft, yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. But this, of course, led to the other, like, mind blowing thing for you and I, and that's the music figures that followed. Yeah, and again, the first... and again, McFarlane, right? Yeah, that was '98 because Psycho Circus by Kiss had just dropped, and there was yep. a comic book also based on the Psycho Circus record. And the figures that followed were mo- like kind of futuristic interpretations of the Destroyer outfits from KISS. Like they had tubes and wires and it yeah. was like Destroyer, but kind of futuristic. And those, man, we both love those. Like I bought, oh, I, yeah. I still have Gene Seal. The rule of two. Figures. You got the yeah. rule of two for those for sure you did. Yeah, I got two of all of those. So I had them on the wall. Then they had the open ones. Yeah, the music figures were really awesome. And then the second set of figures that they released, the music ones, were, of course... Uh, A live one. No, 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 no. The Beatles. Oh, the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant Kiss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Beatles. So they did, uh, like, the animated kind of yellow submarine version. And it's surprisingly, though, because they never had an action figure of the Beatles to that point. They had dolls and uh, plushies, but never an actual action figure. So that was, like, the first time that that happened, which was cool. And I mean, I, and, and, and then everything McFarlane exploded from that point on. I mean, you had like the McKenzie brothers, you had, uh, I think he did Star Trek ones as well at some point too. And video game figures were all, like everything that was like adult centric or that whoever was adults at the time that could call back to their, their youth. McFarlane was going to make something for, because it wasn't a big brand of a toy you know, of a toy company, he was going to take the licenses and licensing really became the drive at that point. What licenses can we acquire? What can we make an action figure and give to people? Yeah, it was a a special time for collectors. And I'm glad that we were a part of that. That was around the same time our hometown store heroes changed ownership to where Brom took over. Um, Yeah. Do you want to read these comments out? We should read them out for sure. No, I mean, I've just been flashing them up on the screen as they come. I want to definitely give a shout out to Daniel and uh, Chris Kovachenko and Kale and our good friend uh, Ian Tom Hook. Uh, he's back. What's he's he doing over here? One of our I'm over What's here. Over there? What's he over there? What's he doing over here? Well, he's over here checking us out. out. We, we, we appreciate that support. And uh, right here, speaking of action figures, and Ian Hook, I've got. Cool Ship Magazine. You can see uh, Michael Myers on the front cover there. 
Legion of Doom as well, which is cool. So it's an indie magazine with all the cool shit that you love. Um, check it out. It's short uh, first volume. I think it's going to be three or four issues, which is awesome. But I mean, the quality is awesome. So shout out to Ian for putting this together and for featuring Jay and I, I think, in a couple different capacities. So that's good. Peter Willera says, hey, guys. Hey, Peter. How are hey, you Pete, doing? Hey, Pete. What's up, man? Um, if I could touch on uh, the magazine uh, yep. that Ian creates, too. What really okay. got me with, with that first issue, uh, the glossy pages. Yep. It was so awesome, and it was so refreshing. It really reminded me of old school Electronic Gaming Monthly, where every page was a page turner, and I couldn't wait to see. And there's just so much color and so much artistic design. It's a really fantastic magazine. Um, so, guys, if you miss print like I do, check it out, man. Cool shit magazine. I want to go through a list of top 50 films here and we'll see how many actually have action figures and, and don't on our previous discussion. We talked about Indiana Jones and James Bond as really big franchises with a lot of history that didn't really do much in the action figure sphere. So I thought, well, what about the su supposed 50 best films of all time? How many of them actually have action figure lines that have, you know, done something? So, I didn't want to go to like the top grossing films because those aren't necessarily the top 50 films. So I found an article from Business Insider who took Metacritic and this is from, it's been updated as of May this year. So, so we'll see how accurate it is, but we're going to go in reverse order. So number 50 uh, and Metacritic for anybody that doesn't know, it basically looks at the, the critical score from movie review critics and whatnot out there and kind of, you know, uh, rates it. So number 50 already has like a 95 out of 100. So everything is supposed to be super well good. So the number 50 film is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. It's a film I've never seen. Jay, do you know it? It's from 2019. No, I no, I can't imagine Casablanca figures, but hey. Who am I to judge, right? Who am I no, to judge? No, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, not Casablanca. I know, no, but I'm assuming that's going to be somewhere in the top five. I hope I've, so. I've I, never, can, I, I can picture that. I've never heard of that movie, to be honest. No. Uh, if you haven't, I certainly haven't. So, 49, Toy Story. Now, this is an interesting one to talk about because, of course, there have been tons of uh, Toy, uh, Toy Story releases and merchandise out there for every film. There's another Woody and another Buzz. But they've all obviously been really pushed at the at the younglings out there and with super sevens disney ultimates line and even though this is a pixar film i wonder if we're going to get like a really cool articulated woody and buzz at some point oh it 100 it's disney there's <laughs> yes there will be just okay, be patient so that's so 48 on the Disney trend still, Beauty and the Beast. Again, I think we could definitely see so, some character from this movie in the Disney Ultimates line, but nothing yet. They had, I think, uh, some toys released, you know, when it was released in 91, but nothing, you know, quality, nothing that stood the test of time. It was just a film that was in and around, and that's it. There's some uh, really bad toys based on the live action one that I've seen. They're oh, boy. Bad, man. Uh, Spirited Away, uh, Miyazaki film from Studio Ghibli. Uh, super creepy film. There is some, you know, Studio Ghibli merchandise out there. We actually have the No Face plushie from this movie, which is a blast. But again, it's kind of a bit of a cult thing. Miyazaki is obviously worldwide known for his, for the anime that they do, but it it just didn't spawn a line at all. Same with number forty six, Fantasia. We are getting. Mickey Mouse Sorcerer's Apprentice through the Disney Ultimates and Super 7, but that's it. No other characters have been released. 45, Gravity. Uh, you know, again, fun movie, but no action figures for it. I'm starting to think that, you know, if you put out a good movie, chances are you're not going to have action figures. 44, Mean Streets. Uh, 43, Grapes of Wrath. 42, Parasite, which won Best Picture a couple years ago. 41, Ratatouille. Uh, Pixar stuff and Disney stuff is like only around for the year of when my kids started kind of discovering this stuff. I wanted to go back and get them like a, a Remy doll from Ratatouille or Linguini. You can't find it anywhere. If you don't get that stuff the year of the film release, you're not going to ever find it again. It's just gone. Um, which kind of underlines those hardcore Disney collectors. Have you seen any of those Disney collectors and the stuff that, that they go after and how much they cover? Oh, yeah. Them? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of um, uh, our buddy Pete's in the chat there. A lot of his high-end collections. He collects a lot of Sideshow and Hot Toys 
and it reminds me of that stuff like you're talking hundreds of dollars for each figure but they're super detailed right and the figure like the cloth material they're wearing is the actual material the actor would wear like it's just insane stuff that's on another level i'm jumping ahead here number 30 american graffiti didn't get any figures from that despite it being a lucas film uh 29 streetcar named desire 28 psycho <laughs> didn't we get a uh, norman yeah. bates figure from, uh, from psycho 2 wait ah. i think it was from psycho 2 psycho 2 was uh you're gonna hate me because you're you love the classics and hitchcock and all that it's hitchcock right yeah yep um but i liked psycho 2 better i think it was just a soft reboot of the first one like you said yeah it's a little easier to watch that's just that's just me man Sure, sure. I can get that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Strangelove, 25. The Third Man, 24. An Orson Welles film. My Left Foot, 23. The Wild Bunch, 22. Hoop Dreams, 21. 20, All About Eve. Rashomon at 19. North by Northwest, another Hitchcock <laughs> film. Some Like It Hot, Marilyn Monroe, of course. Nothing there. Pan's Labyrinth, 16. Now, there are a bunch of figures for Pan's Labyrinth, uh, I think released from NECA at this point right. um, but but nothing that is you know catching fire it's probably going to be limited release and and that's that so let's keep going here uh treasure of sierra madre nothing for that bogart film uh touch of evil another wells film at 14 pinocchio again disney ultimates is giving us a release on that and it's a cool figure because it comes with figaro the cat cleo the fish and jiminy cricket so it's like a four pack almost intolerance at 12 Moonlight at 11, another recent Best Picture winner. City Lights, uh, Charlie Chaplin, Singing in the Rain, Notorious. Vertigo, another Hitchcock film, Three Colors, Red. Uh, Boyhood, Casablanca, number four, Jay. There you go. You're right. Rear Window, another Hitchcock flick. Uh, the Godfather, number two. Did we, we got some Godfather figures, did we not? We did, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember for the life of me. Okay, I'm guessing so NECA. Yeah, I was going to say, my mind is a little fuzzy. Remember I had the uh, Patrick Bateman figure yep. from American Psycho? What, who made that? Anybody out there know who made that... the American Psycho figure? Because I think the Godfather was in created by that. I, 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 think, the it I think it was McFarlane, too. It's the same one as my Jareth from, from Labyrinth with the long yeah. flowing cape. So I'm pretty sure it's the same one there. Uh, and the number one film, of course, that they have listed here is uh, Citizen Kane. So... You know, the, the big takeaway from, well, Jay, what do you think of that? I mean, the 50 best films, you know, other than the Disney ones that got seasonal releases, nothing. Most of this stuff would, uh, in my opinion, fare better as a Funko Pop, because that's kind of what those figures have done, is you want a figure or sorry you want a character from the favorite movie and you know just sometimes it doesn't really translate well in an action figure form but a bobblehead i mean a citizen kane bobblehead i, I don't know man but I, I can, Foster kane, yeah, sure. yeah i can certainly Comes see that working more than like a, a big articulated figure unless you're getting into hot toys territory then now again like we said with uh indiana joe or yeah both indiana jones and bond and again go sub to our patreon if you want to hear that full episode so it's just over an hour and we we go deep on some cool fan theories on what would be some great action figure lines and how they could kind of span out i think you could kind of tackle the hitchcock universe because there are a lot of you know really iconic protagonists and and obviously the villains you know it's a horror you know universe like any other or I just think you could probably do it well. I don't know what the appeal would be like, but I could see at least the cohesion to building a line around every film that Hitchcock had released. And of course, like the chases and the variants, because he always appeared in his films too. So you could do that as a like a Comic-Con exclusive or or something. But I could see Jimmy Stewart in his in his wheelchair from rear window with his with his camera, you know, or or even like little dioramas or something, because so many of the locations become iconic, like the shower scene in, in Psycho, right? So Sure, but you got to think of the the startup money to print a bunch of figures like that. I, I just can't see something so niche doing well, right? I, I well, don't know. it's funny because Mondo's first action figure, I think, was an Alfred Hitchcock figure. I remember in, that in one. Six yeah. scale, yeah. But that's Motu Alfred Hitchcock, right? That's like yeah. making a, a George Lucas figure. Like that's going to do well, right? It's 
I don't know. I, I mean, as much as I like classic cinema, I don't want to buy a Hitchcock figure. And I oh, like his film. See, I would. I would. Well, then you I can do go that. do it. You can go on eBay well, and get an eBay exclusive and, and add it to your shelf, and you can continue to the shelf life. Uh, what Motu, is up, Joe? Yeah, yeah, and ahead. Motu Joe says, if they did the Godfather toys and they didn't include a cutoff horse head, they did not do the Godfather toys. How <laughs> astute of you to, to mention that, Joe. That's, that is a good... A good observation. That that could be the Comic Con exclusive there, the bed and the horse, the horse head underneath the sheets or whatever. That'd be a fun creature. You'll need touch. some diamond select kind of packaging for that stuff, man, because that would be like ginormous. I was thinking about some other figures that would be good that they could make. Uh our our good buddy and mutual friend Justice Curry has some of the never ending story figures. And I think he was featured on comic book men showing them off to to the to the stash and, and red bank there and i thought man that would be a great series to revive at least for the nostalgia sake alone of seeing a trey you and you know artax and the swamp of sadness diorama of course falcor for sure the the southern oracle all that stuff would be great i don't know if people would want bastion or not because he's kind of always the downer part of the movie i want to stay in fantasia I think that movie is uh, something we've also touched on uh, why G.I. Joe and Star Wars is so great is because there are those main characters, but everybody likes something different from never any story, right? Like there's yeah. a lot of characters to like. There's not just James Bond or Indiana Jones, right? It's There's a lot of guys. So like, yeah, I don't know why. There must be something with the filmmakers. They don't want to let the license out because i don't even think there's pop figures and if there isn't a pop figure of it yeah there's something <laughs> going on right so along the same lines willow had a release of action figures in the 80s and now with word of uh the willow series coming to disney plus the executive produced by ron howard who directed the first film i wonder if we're going to get some willow figures coming out you can it's safe to say anything with disney on it you're going to get a figure for yeah. sure willow i mean Oh, of course, Willow, yeah. Are they going to have uh, Warwick Davis back, or is it like a new yeah. generation? Kind no, of it's yeah. uh, apparently he's he's on board. He was tweeting about it, I believe, and it's it sounds exciting. I'm never a huge fan of Willow. I get the appeal. It just it felt like one, like just another fantasy film. Uh, I get why people love it, but it's just not a fantasy film that I go to as a trope. I'm much more of a, a Labyrinth Dark Crystal Give me return to Oz figures, man. Give me those wheelers and Mombi where she takes off her head and puts all the other heads on and the Gnome King. Oh, the gump on the couch. Jam, I'm way <laughs> over your head now, aren't I? Uh, yeah, I mean, you like you like some stuff. You like some stuff. <laughs> Any other cool movie figures that you think that we need? Do you think we need like proper Pulp Fiction figures or something like that? Oh, we've got a bunch of those. Um, again, man, I got to go to our favorite which is dazed and confused i can't stress that enough and that amazing link that you sent me yesterday i watched yeah. the whole thing the whole thing um and it was just incredible i want dazed and confused figures i would buy every one of them every one of them now again if you want to check out our, our discussion on dazed and confused figures check out our patreon sign up i think it's three bucks you get an extra episode a month video and audio and then we bring you on and we're going to bring our, our first guests on very soon for our next topic i want to ask you a question about dazed and confused figures jay yes a lot of play sets nowadays don't happen for lines it's just too expensive especially for the adult collector market but let's say that there is enough interest in, in our hypothetical dazed and confused action figure line what is the one playset that we get to have for it as voted by the fans? What dazed and confused playset do we get? And I'm going to play devil's advocate with you. So no oh, matter which a, one you pick, what a shock. I'm going to do the, yeah. What a shock. <laughs> um, uh, hey, Lindsay, thanks for, thanks for tuning in and listening to us two idiots. Um, okay. So whatever one I say, you're going to say the opposite. So it's the yeah. Emporium or the Moon Tower. Yeah, that's right. Uh, out of the two, um, Oh man, I'm gonna say Wrong. honest. Honestly, I think it would be easier to make the Moon Tower playset. I'm not uh, asking you to, to facilitate the execution. Okay, uh, let's say 
Yeah, the 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 Moon Tower playset. I would Wrong. pick the Moon Tower playset. No way, no way. Yeah, you know, you 100%. know why? Here's why. Here's why. Okay, we need the Emporium because we'll have the interior and the exterior. Think about all the stuff that happens around the Emporium. The you got all the stuff. The Moon Tower. No, 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 no. Because it's so literally buried. the climax. You're of basically the gonna have like a tower in the middle and nothing. What you're gonna have some flake fake plastic trees. All no. the all you need the to have stories, all the pool tables. All the you stories need to have come to and everything. You're gonna have Clint yep. outside with white lightning. You're gonna have that iconic moment where you can have McConaughey, uh, you know, and Willie Wiggins just with their backs up and Jason London right against the wall there. Uh it's it's too perfect. You could have the freshman funk and O'Banion. It's it is too good. You need the Emporium. That's where it starts, and You're that's just where it ends. naming characters that are also at the end of the movie, like. But they're way more fun at that point. Way more important stuff happens oh. at the Emporium. In the Emporium, everybody's been to the forest before, where the tower is, but nobody gets to go into the Emporium unless you're with the in crowd. And when you're an action figure collector yeah. and, and you buy into this line, you're in the in crowd. So that's the message we're saying. Okay, so and Lindsay backs me up here saying you gotta have them playing pool in the pinball machine. So there. Oh, come there you on, go. Lindsay, come no, on. The sorry. moon tower. The fans have spoken. <laughs> Don, Don is saying, look, it's a cops. It's so easy. And then he takes See, all the beer. Even oh, Ashley says the paint scene is a must, which happens at the Emporium. You're just losing O'Banion at that point, but all the other arcs end at the Moon Tower, man. That's it's like the end of the, the film. It's so good. Yeah, it's so bum. You might as well come with a soundtrack at Tuesday's Gone and you get depressed every time you look at it. Like you're no, gonna have empty good. kegs. No. <laughs> Motu Joe says either set would be cool, but they must come with at least two vehicles. There you go. White lightning for sure has to come in there. Clint's car comes with it. I like it. So what figure would come okay, so an exclusive figure with the Emporium, who would that be? Oh, what a great question! Tough one, though. Um, I uh, Mitch, Julie, the, Julie. yeah, Mitch's girl, right? He meets Julie, there, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I would say that in the, the moon Julie tower, girl, she's into you. <laughs> moon <laughs> tower cool, sounds stupid, doesn't it? I would say moon tower would have to come with Clint, that's where you get Clint from. I can't see Clint doing so well as a single carded figure, but if he came with his car. Yeah, which you could also yeah. uh, package with the Moon Tower. Oh, I'm so excited. And we're never going to get these. And, you don't you know, know that. Never say never. You're right. We didn't get uh, Days of Confused pops either. And so there's obviously something with the filmmakers where they don't want to they don't want to do that, which really sucks. But uh, so, hey, Mr. Cartier, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in, buddy. We're talking action figures and everything else. We're going to switch to our second topic here. And that's holy grails. What we what we got, what we want, and what we haven't got. And for this segment, we're gonna bring on one of our Patreon backers, Nathan. So let me just add him here to the stream. Hey, there he is, Nathan. Hey, say what's hi, going on, guys. How are I you? Think, good, good, good. Thanks for joining us and making the time. Midday streaming, action figures, plastic dolly talk, and we're talking holy grails. So I'm just gonna direct some traffic here. We'll go around the room. Okay, we'll start with you. When it comes to holy grails. What is it that you've got and checked off your list? And what is it that you want? I don't know. I don't see why we can't. I can't do the big reveal for what I got in the summer. Uh, unless contractually you don't want me to say. You say whatever you want. You okay. do what you want. So forever. No, don't say it. Don't say that? No, I'm kidding. Okay. I want to hear. Everybody knew a kid who had this particular playset, set. Uh, I, I certainly knew one. His name was Pat and Pat reason. I just gave his last name out. I don't care. Pat reason. If you're, if you're watching <laughs> your, your basement is burned into my brain. I remember we went there uh, to his house at lunch. And um, by that time, most people had been done playing with toys. Mm. Uh, not me, but <laughs> most people and uh, going to his basement. And there it is. 7.2 feet long. Oh, I know what it is. The uh, USS flag aircraft carrier from G.I. Joe. And um, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It was gigantic. And his was mint because he got it. He didn't really play with it. Uh, everyone knew a kid who had one. I never had one until uh, this year. And I haven't actually posted, but I, I'll give credit where credit is due. Um my buddy uh, Craig hooked me up, and uh, I got one. So that is my holy grail that I've been chasing forever, 
And uh, it's actually in the studio upstairs, and it takes up most of the room of the studio. But I don't care because I want to look at it all the time. So there you what, go. What uh, What's still left on your grail list now that you've checked this off? Did it, Did it feel good to get it, and now you could relax, or did a new item rise to the top of the board? It was like bling, Family Feud style. This is what I got to get now. Yeah, there's always a a new item. Um, I'd still like to get Boulder Hill. Uh, I think Mask, Grail yeah. Grail is pretty much in the eye of the beholder. So sure. that is the uh, only mask playset. And uh, like I was saying on an episode we did a couple days ago or whatever, yeah, I do have the two figures. I have Alex and Buddy, but I don't have the playset. Only come across it a few times. Like all mask toys, it's very expensive and very fragile. So a lot of the Boulder Hills I think we've seen over our time have been broken. Yeah, oh, so, I think that that off the top of my head, yeah. All right, so we're gonna switch over to Nathan now. Nathan, what are some of the holy grails that you've got, and what are you still looking for, my friend? So, actually, I have one of the holy grails right here. Um, Mr. Little Samson, if you can see Whoa. it. Oh, yeah, that, that is, is a nice collectible, my friend. That was one of my holy grails, matter of fact. Um, my wife found that for me um, for our anniversary this year. And, she's a keeper, um, buddy. She's a she, keeper. she is a keeper. Uh, you know, she was a boss. She um, she busted in that uh, uh, video game store, you know, like she was going to own the place. And she went in there to try to haggle. They said no. And she said, OK, well, here's my money. So um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that has been a holy grail for a long time. For me. What, what did it feel like to, to acquire that? First of all, were you surprised because it was a gift? Yeah, so she she took I, I got it before the anniversary because she was afraid that somebody was going to snatch it up. I know that it it was in a, a video game store about twenty miles from us, um, and um, so she was like, you know, we're gonna go, um, we're gonna, you know, I, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. We when we get there, um, I went in, I saw it, I saw it, I. I I instantly was like, Oh my God, it's, you know, it's little Samson. And, um, she was like, well, that's what I'm getting you for your anniversary or anniversary. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was beyond shocked and I was nervous. Um, so we went out, um, she was like, I don't know how to tell if it's a, a original or not. So we contacted Jay actually. And, um, Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I said, Hey, look, you know, I, I don't know how to tell if this is real or not. He was like, wow. if if they don't if they don't open it for you, do not get it. And he yeah. told me yeah. what to look for on the board. Um, we googled the board. We we made sure that it was authentic. We played it in the store, and um, we brought it home. And I, I was absolutely nervous. And I've played it once, um, but I went out and bought a reproduction of it so I could play it um, on the NES. So right. um, that way I could actually play it. And, uh, it it's got a little bit of a uh, story with it. Um, I had a friend that uh, his brother had little Samson, but they would never let me play. So I had always <laughs> seen it, but I never got to play it. And it, a little bit, yeah, it, it, it was a, it, you know, it was cruel, but it must um, be like when we go over to someone's house and there's a figure on the shelf and we can't touch it, but we just wish we could play it or be that character. That's like growing up with Jay. We're not, and I was never allowed to be the main character. He could only be the certain figures when we would play mix up and stuff. So I, I know exactly what that's like. I got to see the character, but I could never get closer than four feet. It was social distancing before it was <laughs> was the norm. Like stay away from my stuff, Papa Macaulay. Just just get away from it. We've been social distancing since the eighties. <laughs> that's right. Since yeah. since figures. So yeah. What's on your What's on your list to so get stuff? What's on my list is exactly what Jay has. Is the USS flag. Um, ah. I had it for all of. 10 minutes. Um, uh, my mom got it for me for Christmas and um, uh, we set it up and um, my father, it's kind of a bad story, but I, I don't want to bring the show down, but um, my father ended up getting <laughs> drunk and destroying it. And um, no! uh, yeah, what? so um, yeah. Mother you can say it. Same so path. I had pieces of it and we, I didn't know it was going to be worth anything, even the pieces. So we ended up uh, tossing it. And, the pieces um, are nothing. Just send them all yeah. to, to Jay and I. <laughs> <laughs> so that is actually one of my Holy Grails to get. Um, 
I don't know where I would put it. And my wife told me uh, that's <laughs> never going to happen. But um, um, yeah, that's that's probably my my biggest holy grail is the USS flag. So that's awesome. That's awesome. That's really cool, man. And a tragic story. A tragic yeah. story. Absolutely. Um, that thing is fragile. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, there's been a few times I've put together a couple and uh, there's a lot of times when it actually creaks together like an old ship. It's like creak and you can you can feel the plastic start to stress and you can see the white and you're like, oh, my God, I got to walk away. Like you have to have a steady hand for that thing. And once it's built, it's not moving. So I don't know if you've seen there's a lot of um, guys in the toy uh, the toy biz like uh, uh, Michael Mercy is also a, an awesome YouTuber from Canada and he actually has his on a makeshift rolling platform which mm. adds another level so you can put the whale hovercraft and uh, all the other uh, Joe boats and stuff like that under it so that oh, makes cool. a lot of it's sense. really cool man yeah it's uh, I would look into that if you're gonna get one so then you can kind of move it around a little bit like uh, you can pretend like it's sailing you can just like sailing sailing. but you can put it in the middle of the room and if you have to tuck it away on in the side you can just roll it across instead of it being stationary yeah and that, that makes the playability of it so much better <laughs> well you gotta play with it yeah you, well, no, you have to. he's gonna get one complete and then he's gonna get a repro one to play the repro because heaven forbid you enjoy the actual thing yeah, I know. Um, I, I do that with a lot of uh, the games that I get. So, um, yeah. Do you have That's a fair. Do you have a top loader NES, Nathan? No, I have the original. I need I need to get a top loader. So you get a top I, loader, man. There's uh, nothing's going to happen in that game. It uh, the sticker doesn't even rub on it or anything. I would okay. suggest you get a top loader for a hundred bucks. Um, your your yeah. game's not going to burn out and stuff. I understand. I understand your fear, man, but. Yeah, dude, you gotta play the original. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I actually beat the reproduction uh, not too long ago, so um, I was I was pretty happy. Oh, wicked! So, yeah, that game's hard, man. It, it's it's extremely hard, extremely hard. So. We got a comment here from Bill, uh, who's another big supporter of ours. He goes, "My girl quest will be replacing my favorite childhood toys that I've lost for years. Amongst those is a set of Darkwing Duck figures and the Thunder Quack Jet. I gave them <sighs> away when I thought I didn't need toys anymore, and I forgot about them over the years. But thanks to AFA, better known as Action Figure Adventure, I want them back in my collection. A funny story about <laughs> the Thunder Quack Jet, Bill, is uh, when I first moved back to Canada." Because I'm from here, but then I live in Vegas, and then I came back. Oh, brother! Uh, my wife Tanya took me around to some of the antique shops in the area that I didn't know about, and we saw the Thunder Quack Jet, which is like you know the Batwing for for Darkwing, and I it was like fifty bucks, and it was one of those like multi tiered places where you've got to like remember the number and then go down and find the person behind the cabinet, and then you got to walk back up and, and try to find it. And I was just like. 50 bucks it was scuffed up it wasn't that good i never had it growing up but i'm a big darkwing fan i had to pass but yeah that's uh that's a great so it's playmate so you know what you're getting with that and i want to comment bill uh dude thanks again for the support and uh we didn't pay him to plug action figure adventure i swear to god we didn't pay him um I'm i get you. the invoices that's why you don't think we pay him <laughs> i'm with you there man i uh, uh rob knows this story a million times but I had um, little cousins that my mom wanted to donate some of my older toys to. And that's where my um, bigger six inch stuff went when I was a kid. So uh, I said, you can't touch the Star Wars. You can't touch the Joes. But unfortunately, and, and Joe's going to hate this one. That's where my Masters of the Universe stuff went and my sectars. All my kind of barbarian bigger stuff went to my cousins. So, uh, yeah, tragedy. Uh, in terms of my holy grails, honestly, the the one that I've gotten recently uh, might not be a big deal for some people, but I mean, it's a fairly expensive thing to get now. And of course, there's a story behind it, and that's the Masters Universe Classics Castle Gray Skull. So when this came out, I couldn't afford to do it. I could barely afford to do the figure subscription, which was like twenty five bucks a month plus shipping. Uh, and this came out in 2013 and I had just stopped doing the subs. I was moving across the country. I was in Texas, moving to, to Nevada. And as much as I wanted, I couldn't pull the trigger flash forward to us doing action figure adventure. And of course you're getting the vibes again, all the things you wish you could have. And 
I couldn't find one at a decent price. But I did find a vintage one, boxed, really good. Even had some Christmas paper still left on it from back in the day. And I really loved it. It was a really nice box. And I was happy to have the vintage. And of course, it's a great piece. And the box art for the vintage is, is just amazing in its own right. But then this gentleman named Peter Wallura came into our lives. And Pete is a master's collector um, where he's he's very much the rule of two. And for classics, he bought two of everything so he could have one figure in front of the package kind of on display. And if it came with multiple heads, then he bought a, a third figure so he could show both kind of heads or outfits or whatever. So this, of, of course, meant that he had two Castle Grey Skulls, one that he had opened and one that, that he had left sealed in the box. And I started kind of picking at him saying, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? And then I made him a real serious offer saying, I will trade you my complete boxed vintage gray skull plus some cash for your classics opened one loose. And, you know, we talked and hummed and hawed and he, and he went for it and I literally picked it up from him and I put it in the front seat of my car, put the seatbelt over it and drove home happier than you, than you can imagine. I think the reality is with that piece, you can still find a lot of the vintage gray skulls. Maybe not finding a box is, you know, super easy, but you can find the castle a lot. Finding a classics one for a good price and one that was so close and I didn't have to pay for shipping, that 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 kind of sealed the deal for me on that. Uh, that's that's great. Yeah. And again, it's um, what I've been saying since we've started the video game stuff and the action figure stuff, man. Uh, the power of community is just... It, it humbles me every day when uh, you know guys like you know Nathan here reach out and just everyone just wants to help each other and uh, I just love being a part of it. So thanks to all you guys, man. We wouldn't yeah. be here without you guys, like really. Well, in terms we appreciate of you guys, <laughs> oh well, thanks. You man. better. We <laughs> do. Uh, in terms of grails that I'd like, it's a weird one, and with the new Snake Mountain coming out, this is one that I've been you know after for a long time and it's Im literally impossible to find and when you do find it it's like 2000 us on on ebay and that's the icon heroes snake mountain so about six seven years ago icon heroes released a a small statue three-dimensional castle oh, gray skull yeah. and then they released a base for it. but they also released a snake mountain which was just amazing detail and i could never find it i missed the pre-order on it pre-order on it for whatever reason and since then it's been like it's vanished i know our good friend justice curry has one and showed it off the other day show off but uh <laughs> again it's awesome and even with the classic snake mountain coming out that's still one that i'd really like to have because it the finishing detail on it the paint apps are, are just it's just beautiful so that's the end of my my grail wants right now i mean of course other than the obvious the blank from dick tracy Listen to any other episode we've done. I, I'm basically <laughs> trying to include reference to that figure in every episode at this point until I will it into my collection. So, yeah, I think, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil anything, but you've had a couple good leads. Uh, we'll see where those go in the future. But yeah, yeah. This is, I think the first year where you're actually like, yeah, okay, so I'm serious now about this one. I mean, why not? Uh, if this year has taught us anything, right? It's let's not be irresponsible, but you know, if you want something and you can afford it, why not? Why yeah, not? Totally. You know? Well, that'll do it for our movie figure segment. Nathan, I want to say thanks again for joining us, for being a supporter on Patreon. I mean, we talk all the time, you know, off air, so to speak. So I look forward to our, our next round of chats. I got something to drop in the post for you, of course. Um, so, you know, we'll catch you on the flip side. Anybody that does want to join Patreon, go for it. I think it's the first 60 or 90 days you're going to be entered in for a contest uh, to win a gift. And I can tell you that right now that that gift is going to be a signed action figure adventure poster from, from Jay and I. So we'll mail it to you. All you have to do is become a, a Patreon backer at any level and we'll randomly draw it. And then it could be yours and we'll send it off to you signed. So there's only 250 in existence and a bunch of them have sold already. Thanks to uh, the efforts of Motu Joe and retro rags limited. So this is a good time to get that uh, one of a kind gift. So thanks, man. Thank you. I appreciate it guys. Cool. Take Cheers. Care, man. So Jay it's uh, we've got a couple things left to do. We've only got about 10 minutes left in the cast. Uh, we were going to talk about toy store success, but maybe we'll save that for the next episode. Let's sure. let's move right to, our action figure spotlight for our first ever live stream. Um, do you have your figure handy? 
I want to say I do. Do you like this? I like this. It's like, do you feel like a little bit like David Letterman? I know you love. I know you love directing the little windows and. Oh, you see those windows and, popping in and around and shifting, I, huh? I see you're doing the little. You're directing with. Yeah, you love it. I love it, man. This is great. I love talking to everybody live. Uh, again, I want to say thanks to everyone for showing up. It's a little more of an odd time, sure, in the middle of the afternoon, but it works best for us. Hey, get out of here with that shrinking me. So thanks, okay. Jay. Um... <laughs> so I have two here. Uh, one, one you're going to be disappointed with. The other one, eh, it might conclude a story. So maybe you can maybe you can pick which one you want to see. I want to see the disappointing one. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to show it. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Oh, t -bop. Uh So if Joe's still watching, um, Joe said his second favorite series is Mask. This is the little bastard that pretty much moves the story in every single episode is uh, Scott Tracker here. And his, it's not a droid, but his little robot, T-Bob. And I remember in the day, this was extremely rare. Not so much now, but back in the day. You couldn't find this duo anywhere. And Scott Tracker, I mean, Matt Tracker is probably the worst father of all time. Because this little shit <laughs> gets lost, gets mixed up with Venom in every episode, almost gets kidnapped. He actually gets killed in one of the first three episodes and aliens bring him back to life. I wanted to showcase uh, Scott tracker because once again, him and T Bob, there we go. This was something I never had as a kid, but I remember my buddies when we played mask, we always wanted it because he was such a, he was such a main part of the actual story. That's my action figure showcase. Awesome. All right. Well, Jay, as you know, I have a pile of action figures over here because the males uh, the mail days have been plentiful and very gracious to me. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven figures for you to pick from over here. Please pick a number between one and seven, and I will uh, reveal what that figure is. One and seven again? One to seven, yeah. Uh, I, like, I like the odds. Let's do three. One, two, three. Okay, so... This is a Masters of the Universe figure. It is no. a... I know. Actually... No way. They, they all are. <laughs> they what all a chalk! But the funny hey. part about that is, I didn't. I I was done collecting kind of masters because I kind of had everything I wanted, and now suddenly there's this mail day stuff. I blame our good friend Josh Van Pelt, who's been having really great claim sales on uh, on Facebook, and I and I've got some cool stuff. So this figure um, is a Toy Fair Wizard World exclusive from the 2002. Uh, run of He-Man toys. It uh, is a figure I always wanted because clearly why else would I have bought it? And uh, there's even an interesting backstory to it. So I'm just going to reveal the figure. So we have Faker from 2002. Again, wow. never made an appearance in the show from what I remember. That's and, wicked. But they released it here like this. Now, when I got it, I noticed something. I noticed... Those two holes there at the top, do you see them? Right under the T and under the yeah, U? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait a second. Josh is usually really good about this kind of stuff. Like, he doesn't put something up unless, you know, it was uh, a good deal. And then inside, I noticed, I don't know if you can see it in there. You see that? Pin. There's a, there's a little thumbtack in there. So clearly this was tacked on the wall somewhere and so i reached out to josh i said hey man what's going on with this he's like oh man i'm sorry you know we'll, we'll work it out if that's cool i'm like yeah that's cool he goes you know this was eric's from the four from the four horsemen he just had it on the wall he asked me to get rid of it and you know i'm just helping them clear wow. out some of stuff i'm like oh okay then that's fine i'm good with yeah, that I said, <laughs> I, said, oh, I said that's cool i mean don't worry we'll, we'll figure good. it out but good. that's really cool that i got like kind of the personal copy of uh that they had there of, of that oh, figure, it's wicked. So. Uh, and, it's and again, figure. you know, it, there's nothing super special about it. Skeletor's armor, blue He-Man, but Faker is always one of those figures in every line that they do of Masters. That's always a little hard to to find, and he's got a bit of a cult following. Uh, so I, I needed to to get it. So yeah. And Scott likes to think that this is the best toy line ever. 
Rob. Well, the 2002, we're we're huge fans of the 2002 oh, He-Man. Yes. Yeah, I love I love that cartoon, and I actually love the toys when they came out. Um, it was just a great show, and it was nice to see Masters of the Universe characters fighting each other. Like yeah. actually fighting. That I really, really, I really love the intro to it too. How they kind of like started to like throw the you know the homage to the original. My yeah. you know I'm Adam Prince of Eternia, and then boom, the rocket goes off, and it's like, hey, this is a different show than than you were expecting. So, uh, it was Lindsay says, love your setup, Jay, in the background. Thank you. Um, I don't have my uh, main computer here is not in the studio otherwise i'd be up there with all the toys but this is actually i like this backdrop better there's more space behind you there's more depth of field there's more color there's a lot of video game stuff Lindsay's a good supporter i met her in um phoenix uh as part of the game on expo she's purchased nintendo quest i'm pretty sure from us and gives us a lot of support so it was really cool to see you on the cast Lindsay. Um, um, I also I, I want to give a shout out too to to Scott here. Scott's a big supporter of us too, and Scott has an, a wicked uh, Canadian um, action figure page on Facebook, and I've got a lot of great deals off him. And uh, when I get my newest shipment, I'm going to give him a shout out to uh, his store and all that stuff because he's just a really great dude, man. So to thank Scott for uh, for being here too. Appreciate we've it. got a we've got a few extra minutes, Jay. We could do a special live stream double action figure spotlight if you want, since you think your other figure is probably a little bit more interesting, anyways. Sure. Yeah. I mean, All right. Uh, let's see it. Okay. So, like we started off the stream uh, with the tragedy. Oh. Uh, I, I didn't say this was a good story. I just said oh. it was maybe a conclusion. See ya. Uh, <laughs> you're out. <laughs> Um, so I got the fourth Luke in the mail the other day. Um, you guys can see, uh, you can't see too well, but this star case would imply that I finally got my Luke. So oh, this nice. one is in amazing shape. And again, cause the glare, I can't really show you, but the figure is great. The eyes are great. Um, everything is fine. The card is in perfect shape. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to do a little video of that, uh, you know, down the road, but I just want everyone to say, I want to, I want to actually tell everybody I'm getting choked up because it's been such a journey. Thanks for I the like, support. My Luke is, is still better than yours. No way, man. Look at it. Tell me that is not like the best part of the story. Like just when your luck can get worse and I try to help I, you out. And I love the reveal how you had it backwards, so I couldn't. Because it's, it it it's the same, it's the same wave, the same wave, and it's right. a clone trooper. Uh, that's great. But everyone that reached out with actual concern, and there was a lot of people that say, "Hey, I found this in the store. Do you still need it?" So many people reached out to me, guys. Thank you. Like, oh, that's awesome. There's a lot of comedy to it, but in all honesty, yeah, this was the figure that I just I wanted to be perfect, and I finally got it. My fourth one. Uh, a few days ago, they only had nine left, and after the two that you got, Robin, prob- they're probably out by now. But uh, yeah, so there yeah. You go. So basically, so- if I get one, it won't matter the condition because I'm opening it, unless his eyes are all sketchy and you know. Well, I have three others. If you're opening it, I'll trade you to have another one on a good card if it turns out good. Oh, uh, sure, yeah, okay, that's good. the one. Actually, the first one with the crushed bubble is still out of all the figures the best figure. The paint's perfect on that one, so I can give you that one. Cool. All right, Jay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven figures to my left. Let's go with uh, lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. Oh, it's all the way at the bottom. Hang on. It's so tough being an action figure collector. <laughs> Make sure Freddy doesn't get you. Take it easy. Hey. Yeah. You, what, you don't like my setup, Lindsay? What's wrong with the boiler room? Hey, I'm over here. Come on. Hey, I got a poster. I got some decoration. It's, it's homeless. Uh, Rob McZob. I don't. I don't even live here. I don't think they realize I just kind of came through the window and set up my internet. He puts a little. Uh, it puts a little Nintendo Quest poster to make it seem like it's his. Oh no! I, I I live here. Don't don't worry. It's, <laughs> it's legit. Okay. So this is another Masters of the Universe figure. This goes back to the Staction line uh, that saw Four Horsemen Toy Design team up with NECA uh, a few episodes ago. I revealed my Hordak figure, but I have another one here. Now this isn't you know by any means a must-have figure. 
but it is a great figure to have. It's kind of a two pack. Uh, and I had the other variant of this originally. So it's cool to have this one checked off the, the list. And that is Evil Lynn. And Aww. she comes she comes with Screech. So you can kind of wow. take a look. Let me just make this big so you guys can kind of see here. Um, the variant had her in yellow skin, much like her original action figure. But I really like that she comes with, with Screech kind of as a add-on figure. So, and of course, the awesome art on the back. Um, That's wicked. Man. You can see some of the other figures in there. Real blast and squeeze. I have squeeze as well. Uh, it's not sealed. I got this figure from Justice Curry. I knew it was loose, but it was cool enough to include the package as well. So um, I intend really on cool. dis displaying her for sure. So excited to put that out there. Oh, okay. Here we go. I, I like it also, Rob. I love the Nintendo Quest poster in the back. Well, you didn't want to pick out my other features in the background, like this basket or this wire hanging down. Well, you didn't like those. You only like the poster. You know what? If you're what's not going to say something nice, I can't even point. What's to the right of your head? Is that a saw? Yeah, right there. What is that? That right is Finnegan. That's Finnegan from Mister Dress Up. Oh, <laughs> that looks like a saw. That's Finnegan. Okay. Hey. Hey. All right. So, All right. Well, that'll do it for another episode of the Jay and Rob Toy Show, our first official live stream. Live stream number one. Uh, again, appreciate all you guys checking in, just giving us your comments. I know it's in the middle of the day. It makes it a lot easier for, for us to do it this time. We will endeavor to do an evening one so you guys aren't trying to do this while you're at work at the same time. Uh, Jay, where can people find you if they want to see more of your shenanigans? Uh, on social media. I'm on everything. Uh, just my name. It's really easy. And I do have a YouTube page that is focused on toys that I've started but, just but this Jay, year. Jay, when I go to the YouTube page and i search jay bartlett i get confused yeah so there's two uh there's a much more bigger and popular jay than myself and he is an exorcist um i've tried that but it's not really my thing so it's the one below with the gi joe explosion that's me um so check me out there guys i upload three videos weekly and uh i just talk about toys and if you love this you'll love that and you can find me on social media at Rob McZob, both on Twitter and TikTok. Obviously, a bunch of you are friends with me on Facebook. It's kind of a locked account, but hey, if you're on there and you're saying hi to me, it's all good. Let's keep talking over there. Uh, and we always end our shows with our wonderful slogan, for the love not, of toys. Not ours. What? It's, it's, it's not it, ours. It is now. We added the beginning part, <laughs> which makes it ours. It's not ours. It is we, now. They didn't make it up. It's not ours. We did now, though. For and the no, love of toys, take care of yourself and each other. We'll see you guys around. Check out the podcast, YouTube, Patreon, of course, and everywhere else you listen to your fine toy collecting endeavors. Cheers. Cheers.